what we call sexy. You can see from the title, it's more of a love album. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another week of Manversations 2020. And uh, I do want to say shout out to everybody. Um, you know, it's 2024 Manversations. Definitely want to give a shout out for Manversations for being such a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, platform. Um, starting the year out pretty dope. So we just wanted to wish you guys a happy 2024. Um, I know we didn't get to talk much about that last week, but definitely um, looking forward to a great, great start this year. And I'm hoping you guys uh, have a great uh, 2024 as well. Uh, we have a great show for you tonight. Um, 
It is called Selling Your Soul. I think a lot of uh, what we wanted to do tonight was really to um, capitalize on the Cat Williams uh, ball of steam that seems to be uh, rising at a fast rate, um, even after a week after his uh, interview aired. Um, it still has a lot of steam on it. Um, I think a lot of people, um, eyes are open right now and are thirsty for new knowledge about what's going on behind the scenes. And, um, you know, a lot of these celebrities, what's, what's really going on with them. So we wanted to uh, basically talk about um, the selling your soul aspect, because that was one of the things that he touched on in the uh, interview. Um, and then you had receipts that followed it. So then everybody's like, hey, how real and how deep is this This rabbit hole goes when it comes to how much people will do to sell their soul and also to disrespect other individuals who are trying to uh, make a lifestyle and a way of uh, living for not only for themselves, but their family as well. Um, would those people kick them in their back and steal food out their mouth? And we're starting to see a lot of shady stuff from people that we admire the most inside the realms of the Hollywood industry. Um, so with that being said, I definitely want to take, uh, turn it over to Major. Uh, this was one of the uh, major topics that he wanted to highlight as well. So I definitely want to give him his uh, shine on basically telling us more about uh, selling the souls and why that's so important for us to have this dialogue tonight. Real talk, man. Um, what's up, everybody? What's going on, family? Manversations 2020, we in the building. Um, we about to kick the dough down for 2024. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's so important that we have this particular conversation because, as Anthony alluded to earlier, you know, it's coming in right on the heels of the Cat Williams interview with Shannon Sharp. And it's like, you know, people wanted to push back against it, those that did. You know, oh, you know, he just talking, you know, that's that conspiracy shit, this, that, and the third, that, 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 this, that, whatever. And lo and behold, not even what, uh, not even a full two weeks later, you got people out here samboing, you know, in line to sell their soul next. I'm so disappointed in Angela Bassett. I don't know what to do with myself. I, I, I just... I, I'm looking at it. I thought it was Photoshop when I saw this picture of her, you know, you know, holding Regina King's face and passionately kissing her in the mouth and all. Oh, my God, dude, what? You know what I'm saying? It's like it's just like Cat Williams said in the interview. These people out here doing something strange for a piece of change. You understand what I'm saying? Just about all of them. You know, and. I've said this before myself. That's part of the reason why I didn't go into entertainment. Or if I'm going to do it, because you could you could argue that what we're doing now is entertainment, right? But if I'm going to do it, it's going to be on my terms. Because I saw too many weirdos doing weirdo shit. And I know me. Like, I'll catch a case somebody try me like that. You're not going to, you're not going to do it like that. You understand what I'm saying? And People really don't understand the things that these people do to get into these rooms. You understand what I'm saying? The things that these people do to get these number one songs. Bruh, they pay for them radio slots. I remember Prince Marky D. We went to the radio station when Prince Marky D interviewed us for our reality show. Um, we have a reality show reel called Clever Records in the Motherfucking Building. It's on YouTube. Y'all could look it up. Check it out. But... Prince Marky D interviewed us at the radio station at 99 Jams. And he called us over. And he, because he was trying to explain to us before, because, you know, we, we fire. We, our music is dope. We fire. Yo, man, holla at us. What is it going to take for you to just, you know, slide us in that rotation so we can get it popping? He walked us over to the computer. He's like, this is what I was trying to tell you. And on the computer, in every slot, for the entire day, Drake, um, Cameron, Mace, Notorious B. I, it just lists the artist, name of the song. List the artist, name of the song. Break. List the artist, name of the song. List the artist, name of the song. Break. 
the whole day is already planned. It's already mapped out. People call in a song, you know, they call in a request. They'll play your request if it's on the list. You understand what I'm saying? They'll play it in the mix real quick and then they'll snatch it back. But all of the slots on the radio are bought and paid for. You understand? And it's payola that gets the, the overwhelming majority of these artists where they are. They pay for those slots. And the people that they that pay for those slots for them, because the artists themselves ain't got no money, they don't pay for nothing. But the people that pay for those slots for them, they're indebted to those people. And they do all kinds of outrageous shit to pay those debts, is what it boils down to. You understand what I'm saying? And so, and you know, in the Angela Bassett case, what I'm guessing, you know what I'm saying, is like, okay, she probably, you know, she just wanted this Oscar all her life or whatever the case may be, you know, and it feels like somebody in a, in a, in a dark room in the back of the back of the back somewhere told her, well, Hey, you know, if you want this Oscar, this is what you got to do for it. I, what, what else does make, what else makes sense? It was totally uncalled for, totally unnecessary, totally unnatural, just weird. You understand what I'm saying? You just go. I've never seen this woman kiss her own husband like that. I mean, she grabbed the face and she, bruh. You know, and we look to sis, you know, as a as kind of a, a, a beacon of like, you know, femininity and, and respect and dignity and whatever, because she's to this point, and I did some research, strangely enough. When I looked up Angela Bassett kissing a woman, I found more than one video of her kissing a woman. Apparently, she also did a love scene with Lady Gaga. I knew nothing about this. You know what I'm saying? They already got her, you know, playing a bed wench in her new um, show, whatever the case may be. It's like, oh, my God. Like, yo. You know, and so that's what we mean when we say selling your soul, doing totally unnecessary things that are totally out of character for you, you know, seemingly to get, you know, said accolades or, you know, said funding funds or whatever the case may be. I'm not sure. It's different things. You know what I mean? But that's what that looked like. You know, like Jada Kiss said in the song, you know, why Denzel had to be crooked, be why, why Hallie, why, why Hallie had to let a white man pop her to get an Oscar. Why Denzel had to be crooked before he took it. Why? That's real. It's not just a lyric. You got to look at the type of stuff that goes on. What's this guy's name? The the weird dude who who uh who did who's in Get Out. What's his name? Lakeith Stansfield. Lakeith Stansfield, you know, I thought he was a pretty decent actor, whatever the case may be. He seemed like he was all right, you know. When he put on that, when he came in that magazine, he did that spread, he was dressed in drag. Man, his ass was gone. He's getting major movie roles now. All over Hollywood. You understand? And if you follow, if you follow it from him to Wayne Brady to Childish Gambino, all these people who do all this weird shit, you know, where they like to blur the lines of their sexuality, particularly if you're black male, it seems like like Dave Chappelle said, they're always trying to force a nigga to put on a dress. And you niggas out here doing it. Furthermore, it really, really hurt me that it was two FBA sisters doing that shit. That really, really, really hurt me because I feel like in some, and this is no, this is no shade to, you know, some of my brothers and sisters from abroad, because I have background from abroad too, but you know, when we start looking at some of this weirdo shit that goes on, it's like some of these tethers, they come over here and they're with the shits. Look at that big, goofy Nigerian nigga that's always dancing, acting moist. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're with the shits. They're with that shit already. Cynthia Erivo, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and some of the other, you know, Issa Rae, some of the other people in that clique, you know, they're kind of with the shits already. FBAs really they don't they don't rock with that weird shit too tough. You know, we church peoples. You dig? And to see it's like I felt like they're targeted 
FBA specifically with this, you know, um, that that just kind of made my head explode when I saw that because it was just totally unnecessary. And to me, it just looks really, really obvious. They talk about these humiliation rituals and, you know, it's an underground thing or whatever. But damn, it looked like they're trying to make the shit mainstream and trying to trying to rub our noses in it. I don't know, man. Y'all tell me, am I am I am I jumping out the window? Am I, do I sound crazy? No. Not even a little bit. Mm-mm. Not even partly. I mean, goddamn. Angela Bassett? That's what hurt me. To 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 tack on to what you what you said, let me let me kind of uh really just help set the stage for that. Or to really really kind of fill in the details with that. So I, I, I looked into the sister. Angela Bassett, she has been, for those who don't know, she's very accomplished. Uh, As far as her awards goes, she has been nominated for four Screen Actors Guild Awards, won one. Nominated for two Saturn Awards, won one. Nominated for three People's Choice Awards. Nominated for an MTV Movie Award. Nominated for 28 Image Awards, won 16 of them. She has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. She's won an award and was nominated once for the Hollywood Critics Association. Nominated for two Golden Globes, won both. 10 Emmy nominations, won none of them. Nominated for a Dallas-Fort Worth Film Critics Association Awards, didn't win. Nominated for seven Critics' Choice Awards, won four. Nominated for two Chicago Film Critics Association Awards, won none. Nominated for 20 Black Reel Awards, won four of them. Nominated for 12 BET Awards, won one. Nominated for two Academy Awards and was given a little participation trophy, Hmm. prize pig, blue ribbon, you did a good job. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Award. 85 total nominations. Won 33 of them. 33 of them with the asterisk on it. Furthermore, not shading anybody else in Hollywood, but this is a very intelligent sister. Highly intelligent sister. She is not only a college degree holder, but she has her master's in, of all things, fine arts from Yale University. Mm -hmm. No slouch. She is Ivy League educated. 65 years young. She's been in the game since the 80s. So we're talking about roughly, what is that? That's a roughly a 30-year career or so. Actually, the mm-hmm. 80s, the 90s, the aughts, the 10s, the 20s. Excuse me, no, that's almost a 40-year career. And sister's in wonderful shape, great health, mm-hmm. looks fan- looks phenomenal for her age. She's probably going to be able to still uh, be in Holly Weird if she chooses to for another couple of decades if she wants to. So we're talking about probably a career that's going to be over half a century mm-hmm. in this industry. Known for having amazing range, despite her age, still connects very well to younger generations and demographics. Everybody from teenagers to people our age and older, they know when you see Angela Bassett, whatever the role is, you will get something good. No matter if it's on the silver screen, if it's on the TV screen, whatever. She's making a cameo in a music video. Whatever it is, she's going to deliver hot justice. Because that's been her standard. So for a woman who, and from her educational background, you can tell that the goal was always to be an actress. It was always to be in fine arts. Being in Hollyweird is her dream. It's her dream. So it's not a minor thing to have invested the amount of time that she Oh, oh wow. Yeah, they won't make y'all be great right here. <laughs> wow, you're back. Oh, oh, oh. 
I'm back. Okay. <laughs> we, don't have no, we don't have no picture, but we'll I'm, take it. We'll I'm, take I'm, you. I'm, I'm, you. I'm, I'm a handless, but I'm still talk my shit. <laughs> they cut off my head. My ghost still gonna talk. Okay. But the point I'm making is the point I'm making is this: this is a woman who's literally given her whole life to her craft. Real so. And knowing who she is, her lengthy filmography, her undeniable talent, her respect from her peers, from the audience, from the industry. I know that deep down inside, it would have bothered her. It would have been a sore spot knowing that she's been that damn good for so long and left the game without getting an Oscar. What that she earned. And to be honest, I'm surprised that she's only been nominated for two. I don't imagine she hasn't been nominated for uh, three or four. Mm. But to leave the game without... The, the the Super Bowl trophy, the Larry O'Brien trophy of the industry. Mm. I know that would have hurt. That would have been snubbed. She's not just talented, but she also has the education. She has the pedigree to back it up. She's covered all the bases. But I don't know if I said it here before, but I said before with Holly Weird, they like to get their victims desperate. When you come to the table, they don't like people with options because what's going to happen is you come to the table, oh, yeah, I want this role. You know, I'm Graham Talented. Oh, that's that's, that's great pedigree. That's, that's an excellent uh, casting call you did. I haven't seen anyone do that before. Really? Yeah, yeah. So where can I start? Well, well, well not so fast. Uh, hmm. You see, and, and imagine Buddy putting his his his, uh, his foot up on the coffee table next to them. There's, there's, there's another part I want you to play really quickly. And, uh, as he unzips his pants, uh-huh. if, you, if, you can, if you can nail this, uh, I think you can have a bright future in Hollywood. Winston Jerome. Yeah, and when you and when you walk up and say, you know what, nah, I, I don't get down like that. Get the hell out of my face with that nonsense. Mm. They ain't gonna feel no ways about. It. They'll show you the door because they know that for every one of you that says no, they got three or four that will make the devil's deal. They got people who are in massive debt from schooling, from training, working three and four jobs in Hollywood, busting tables, sleeping in cars, in in L.A. just trying to get put on. And so when they get that. That knock on the door, yeah, you know, we like your casting audition. You know everything that you sacrificed to get to this point. Mm. And when you start wondering, you know what, maybe if I do something strange for a little piece of change, it'll all be worth it in the end. Mm. They like you that way. So they know once you've had this kind of career, they know that that's when you start thinking about your legacy. And unfortunately, it doesn't matter if it's sports or entertainment, period. Hardware matters, you know. They, 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 they talk about Barkley. They talk about, uh, you know, some of the greats, the, the great basketball players. They talk about the Dan Marinos, how great they were. But they also talk about how they never won the big one. Everybody wants to win the big one, right? Mm-hmm. So once you're at that point, well, you know, you've come all this way, you know, well, you don't have to necessarily. And remember, they tried to answer that, too. They tried to get to do something strange before, and she said no. What? Uh, they try. I forgot what role it was, but they tried to get her to basically um, uh, let one of them figures have their way with her, and she said no. I forgot what the controversy was with that. It was about uh, several years ago, um, but it came out that she refused and she got snubbed for the role. She didn't get it. They gave it to somebody else who you can only imagine said yes, where she said no. Mm-hmm. So they tried to get it with something overt, but here they are because again, Eddie Griffin said they don't let you leave the game unscathed. They came to with something soft. Well, we can give you an honorary Oscar. If you just, you know, maybe nothing crazy like before, but just maybe kiss a woman, let us capture it on film, share it with the world. You can do that, right? That's, that's safe. And she made the deal because they had to get something on her. So, so again, question, they, are you giving her a pass? I'm not giving her a pass for that. I, I, I can't do it. And the reason why I can't do it is because I've held her in too high of an esteem for too long. J- just literally the other day, because the two figures I had in Hollywood for black women as the gold standard, the the, the diamond standard for okay. black womanhood okay. has always been Angela Bassett and Felicia Rashad. And I even said the other day, you know, we have those types who are getting up there in age. 
where's the next generation? Who's going to be the next Felicia Rashad? Who's going to be the next Angela Bassett? Great so question. for too long, I've held that up as the yardstick, and maybe that's not fair to them. Maybe they didn't volunteer for it, but it's what I've done. And while I'm not at calling for perfection, I just personally think that not bending over and letting them violate you isn't too tall an ask. Real tall. I don't. I don't, I don't think is that being unreasonable. No, no, that's that's what it's supposed to be. This is when your dignity and your pride and your morals are supposed to kick in when they come at you with this bullshit. Because I know it's 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 easy for us to say that now. I know in your case, you you've had the devil's pie offered to you, and I know you've walked away and said no. I haven't been made a deal on that grand scale, so to be honest, I'm unproven in that regard. But I would like to think that if someone were to come at me sideways on that nonsense. I'd have the strength of character to flip the table and say, what you can do is you can go and eat a whole bag of roach dicks. I'd like to believe that's what I would say and how I'd get down. <laughs> but I'd also like to believe that because of my demeanor, because of how I carry myself and conduct myself, that that shuts a lot of BS down at the door where I never, where, where the devil knows who to try, so he knows not to knock on my door with that. Not being right. arrogant or cocky, I'm just saying. Because I've had people come to me before and, and say more or less, you know, um, you know, you, you always look so serious, even this, that. And if you know me, you know, I'm always smiling. I always got a good word to tell somebody. I always got a joke. You know, if, if you're down, I've always been that person who's going to lift you up. So it right. surprised me now and then when I hear people say, you know, you always look so serious or you look so stern. You look like you're about business, what have you. So I know I shut a lot of things down just by my presence. Right. Which is good. But, but I like to think that if that comes my way, I'll remain true to form and I won't bend and I won't break and I won't budge on that. But I expect that from the sister and maybe that's wrong to do and she's come this far without going all the way over the edge. Maybe that's a little too much to put on her shoulders. But it's the it's the burden that I've given her personally, whoever I am. So I'm disappointed that she may not have done the most egregious thing out there but I am mad that she's come this far and she didn't finish the journey the way she's conducted this far. Real talk. Real talk. It's the right Definitely. thing. Yeah, she she folded, bro, at the end of the day. That's just what it is. So a lot of you guys probably are wondering what we're talking about. This is the epic picture that um, has been going around. Um, one thing that I wanted people to understand that this wasn't something that was brought upon at the last minute. This was something that was pre-planned. Um, and the reason why it was pre-planned is because of the simple fact that if you look at uh, Regina's, um, Regina King's outfit, um, yep. that's a suit. That's not something deliberate. I mean, that's not something that just was sporadically thrown on. That moment was basically introduced to put the image of a man and a woman um, subconsciously because you have a woman in a dress and then you have a man in, uh, in a suit. That's mm -hmm. normally how the normal... Uh, wear of between men and women is men wear suits, women wear dresses. Right. Um, so the image that they're putting out with this is that you don't need a man, a woman, a strong woman can substitute for a strong man. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that was very, very uh, eye opening that I think a lot of people didn't catch that part of it is that Regina King was in a suit. Um, and I had to Google up something real quick and it says, what is the psychology, what is the psychology of wearing a suit when you're dressed impeccable in a tailored suit, others perceive you as more, uh, competent, authoritative and capable. The, um, positive perspective influences other attributes towards you and reinforces your self perception. Custom tailored suits offer more than just a great fit. They provide an avenue of self-expression. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think a lot of people don't understand is that um, they'll look at it and overlook it, but then you start putting the pieces together. See, a lot of times you don't have to 
people don't have to tell you exactly what's going on. You just connect the dots. So as right. you guys know, one of the most prolific uh, women out here right now, um, you know, um, that's in the game is Janelle Monet. Janelle Monet, when she started off, I liked her music. Um, and then I could see that they grabbed a hold of her. Um, and what we talked about is the topic selling your soul. I personally believe that Janelle Monet sold her soul to get where she at because Definitely. that type of music that she mm -hmm. makes is very, very um, specific. It's not a music that is geared towards def different demographics of the world. It is a neo soul hip hop ish type of vibe, you know, that uh, woke, um, uplifting, you know, right on brother type of uh, music that she came in with. That's not mm -hmm. going to be opened up to the whole world. And we've seen artists like that before who don't make that type of money. Um, they come and go when they open, you know, because you're, you're producing real music. Right. And I guess that wasn't working. And next thing you know, she got into acting. They start giving her the big checks. She start doing major roles. Mm -hmm. And remember, she didn't come in the game as an actress. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? They, they prepped her up and put her in that position <clears throat> in order to feed her and make her into um, that iconic figure that she now is amongst the masses, right? So in order for them to push people out here to push a narrative, you have to promote them. You have to get them big enough to where the audience and the masses gravitate to them. They can't be a regular nobody and push a narrative because they can do something and it goes right out the window because nobody's paying attention to them because they're nobody. This is why major people have major influence. So, of course, you know, she um, took it, uh, got on that level. And, you know, ever since she's been rocking suits. And also she's also been um, expressing her sexuality. So she's been coming out. You've seen her in suits, hugging on women, kissing women. She says that she's bisexual. And now she changed because, like I say, you know, when you get that check, you have to flow with whatever narrative they push it. As you guys know, they're pushing this non-binary thing. And that's what she gravitated towards and says she's non-binary. So mm -hmm. Janelle Monet confirmed she's non-binary in the interview. Um, I just don't see myself as a woman solely. The actor and musician said in a recent interview on Jada Pinkett Smith talk show, which I thought was very um, telling that you're on Jada Pinkett Smith, who is another woman who's out here with children that call themselves on the pansexual side as well. Um, they yep. feel like they have sex with whoever they feel like they want to have sex. They feel like it's not gay. And that's another form of the gender too. And as you see, um, that also came and trickled down from a dysfunctional household between Jada and Will Smith. And you've seen how publicly humiliated Will Smith has been through the actions of Jada Pinkett. So these women, that come in together on this narrative now are you starting to see the pattern now where it's this masculine feminized woman um that's coming to be destructive and uh, trying to exclude the man out of the picture by any means necessary even through the acts of humiliation so yeah. this is the girl power thing this is this is the woman empowerment remember um a couple years back they just had the 100 year of women not being able to vote. So I would think that you know, the 100 year of celebrating women voting, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that was something that I felt like a lot of people um, didn't understand that with that power, they're pushing this new all women vibe. And it's going to trickle down into um, what they're trying to do is basically gear you up for the presidency because I've been laughed at and talked about because I told them that Michelle Obama is going to run and you're going to see Michelle Obama run, right? So they want to keep this wave of the black women in all these seats and all this stuff and, and moving it so they can gear out men, black men particularly, 
out of the whole conversation, out of the scene and just wipe you out completely. So you got to be very mindful when you see things like this, don't take it for face value and say, oh, you know, it's just a little something hit. No, because that's where it starts with. It starts with you downplaying something. And then by the time it gets big and then you see the real agenda, then it backfires. And now all of a sudden you're complaining about it. So you mm-hmm. guys did the same thing with gay men. So you guys were out here supporting it, saying ain't nothing wrong with it. And now you're out here complaining all the men are gay. Or you're complaining that there's yep. gay, gay men out here attacking women and, and being your art. And now you're regretting it. You know, I see a lot of women that used to um, approve of it. Now they're making posts of disdain about it. You know, they're sick and tired of it. They're pushing this gay stuff down my throat. But you were the same one that co-signed it five or six years ago when it was just something you said, oh, it's not a problem. Now it becomes a huge problem that you yeah. guys can control. And now you have a problem with it. So when you see things like that, you got to make sure that you nip it in the bud. You always got to nip things in the bud before they get out of hand. It's no different than you guys uh, handling your child. When you see a child doing something out of the ordinary, you know, hey, that's a little, no, 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 you're not going to do that. And you put your child right back on that track, make sure that they didn't get off that track. Because if they get off that track long enough, then it's going to be too late for you to even try to put them back on that track. So you definitely got to check stuff when you see things like that happen. Um, I definitely want to show Kevin Hart. Uh, you know, definitely, uh, that was one of the guys that, um, Cat Williams talked about, uh, you know, he definitely, I believe he definitely sold his soul, um, for a check. um, he also had him in, uh, getting, there was a video. I didn't even want to play the video for it, but the video of Shaquille O'Neal, oh. him, um, giving him jabs in his ass talking about this is what you're going to get when you go to jail. Um, you know, things like that uh, definitely is some, very suspect. And you don't just do those type of things unless you get a, a check to accept that. You know what I'm saying? Um, a regular man is not going to accept another man, pound him on his back. No matter how close you are to to him, you're not right. going to accept. Um, another one that uh, Cat Williams talked about was Aerie Spears. Um, I believe he sold his soul and he didn't get much out of it either. And that's <laughs> a lot of people be selling their souls and don't get much out of it on the back end as well. Um, Should have gone to get that assessed first. <laughs> yeah, he sold his soul and um, he didn't get much out of it. Because remember, he had a, a video that was a very distasteful video with Tiffany Haddish. And that got Tiffany Haddish also pulled and on the hot wire, and you haven't seen Tiffany Haddish on that because everybody was so disgusted about that little skit video that they did. Um, and mm-hmm. even in that video, you know that they had to sell their soul to do that video because a right man, a right person wouldn't even do no video like that. Real you know, that, that joke was super sick. Neither you know, one of so. them have any class. You know what I'm saying? Like neither one of them have any class or any type of decorum. You know, they're just people who will do anything. That's what the industry specializes at finding. People, exactly. people who will just do anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it's particularly harmful to black society because when they see black people out here behaving like this, that's the rationale that they use to harm us and to administer injustice in our communities on a regular basis. Look at these niggas. These niggas don't know how to carry themselves. These niggas don't know how to act, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we give them all the ammunition they need when we behave that way. Exactly. And then, you know, this is a, a little music video that he did call my man. And then he turns around and kisses him on the lips. And that's the vi- that's the picture that I showed you right there. Jesus. You know, um, and you guys can find that on the internet. Um, I'm cool. <laughs> but uh, also, a lot of those things that they put out there, um, people don't understand the, the that when we say things about selling your soul, they think it's just, oh, you don't know what you're talking about or you're just, oh, you're just talking nonsense and you're overthinking or you're reaching. That's kind of what people always say. 
Um, but you got to look into things harder than what you think it is. And trust me, a lot of y'all don't believe stuff. But, you know, even Jay-Z, Jay-Z selling his soul. Um, I really believe that Jay-Z sell, sold his soul because when I saw this picture with this woman, do y'all even know who this woman is? I didn't know that. I wanted to ask you about that. What's going on there? Who is that? I okay. know that face. I just can't, I can't place it. But it's when, when I saw this picture, the spidey sense went off. I know who she is. I just can't recall or place her. I, but okay, I know so, when I see that face go cross the street, that's danger right there. So this is gonna this is this is gonna get me a lot of flack from a lot of people because uh as you know, Jay-Z is a lot is a um an icon for a lot of people. And me exposing this right quick um is definitely gonna get me some some phone calls and people in my inbox. <laughs> but so that's um, nice. Yes, yeah. but you know we're here. To, we're here to, that now. Don't, don't talk about that. Speak, good people. Yeah, we're here to speak truth to power, right? So we want to know, yeah, like, why would you be around oh, this woman right here? Well, if you guys don't know, this woman is a spirit cooker, right? So her name is Marina Aquama. Says, uh, "Cool Jay Z completely used her for her Picasso baby stunt, right?" Um, and people don't understand like how devious this woman is. <laughs> they have this woman out as a painter. She's not a painter. That's the cover up. <clears throat> this woman, what they call a spirit cooker, is this woman is the woman that when they have those parties at the islands, we already mm -hmm. know a couple of the islands out there. Um, yeah. One of them is in the courts system. But um, when you have these parties on the island, they have sacrificial parts on the island that they sacrifice children. Um, and that's where you get the adrenochrome, right? The whole adrenochrome, y'all heard about adrenochrome. Um, that is basically when you're sacrificing a child while they're alive and you're piercing them um, with a sharp object, dagger, knife, and you're draining the blood out of them. The blood and the chemical reactions while that uh, child is going through trauma, it produces adrenochrome. And when it produces adrenochrome, um, that's the blood sacrifice ritual that they use to drink. So when you always talk about drinking blood and all that, that is where the, uh, that's the source of where they get the blood from. It's not cow blood or anything like that. These are actual live human children blood that they're drinking. Um, this is the woman that's in charge of that. This is the woman that does that. And a lot of people will sit back and say, oh, you're just talking bull crap, right? So I just want to show you that she says, this is how they try to make them um, normalize her, right? So they got her hooked up okay. with Jay-Z. And it says, the day before he came to my office, I gave him the entire PowerPoint presentation and said, okay, you can help me because I really need uh, help to build this thing, she said. Then he just completely used me, and that wasn't fair. So basically, I think what it was, it was a deal, and I kind of think he kind of chickened out on the deal in the last minute, but they put it as where this is how they met. They only did it because of the art, you know, art and everything like that. And you know, Jay-Z talks about his art dealings and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And they play it off as that, but it's more psychotic than what people think it is, all right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, reports Clinton leaked to satanic rituals involving kidnapped children and Marina. Okay, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of people didn't even realize so what was going on. But this video right here, a lot of people have not seen this. And I'm going to show you this that ties everything in. And then I'll leave it at that. All right. Mm -hmm. Let me wind up. It's not a drug to sit down. Death row.
So, um, and I noticed to pay attention to the small statue that's right there in the corner that yeah. represents children. Um, but this is what was written. So I took a screenshot because you notice they didn't really leave the, the words up there too long. Um, with a sharp knife cut deeply into your middle finger of your left hand and eat the pain. These are part of the rituals that she was over there, the satanic rituals that they do on these islands. This is basically what they do when it comes to drinking blood and stuff like that. Um, but they put it all in an art exhibit and make it seem like it's some dark, evil art. But mm. really it's just it's just the writings of what they do. Mix fresh breast milk with fresh sperm milk. Drink on earthquake nights. Bruh. Um, what island had an earthquake? Haiti. Well, what, what they what what have they been known to do over there in Haiti? Ooh, Take their children, right? Trafficking yeah. children. Mm -hmm. mm. Gold mines See, a lot of times, a lot of times people don't understand. You don't need, you don't need, uh, and that's a snake, right, around her, everything like that. Um, so oh, a lot serpents. of times people people don't understand that you don't need people to come out and say what they're doing. You put the dots together. That's how you know what people are doing. And when you put the dots together, you get called a conspiracy theorist because nobody is backing up what you're saying in live media, meaning there's no arrest. So people would be like, well, if that's true, they would arrest them. But the people that's out here arresting people are in cahoots with the people doing it. So you're asking the criminals to arrest the criminals. There's no different from the police investigating the police. <laughs> You're not going to get a good investigation, right? So yeah, uh, they're right. blind eye to their own people, and that's what happens. So when we talk about things, and you know, I don't demonize uh, conspiracy theories. A lot of conspiracy theories are on point. One of the biggest conspiracy theories um, and heroes to this day is uh, Gary Webb. That's the white guy mm. who was uh, um, an editor, a journalist. Um, and writing his short stories in the papers, and he exposed the government for bringing over drugs um, and having a hand in the drugs and He's pushing it in our communities. And guess what? When they found out he was exposing it, they killed him. You know, yeah. and he was a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> you know, what I'm so you guys got to understand. Like, there's a lot of people out here selling their souls. There's a lot of people that you guys look up to that's connected to a lot, a lot of things. I was trying to find an article of, um, what's his name? Um, uh, uh, Tyler Perry, because on Tyler Perry's um, mansion, um, whatever his land they call that, um, with all those acres of land, part of his land is, for, uh, is set up for at-risk adults. And you gotta watch yeah. things that's called at risk because at risk is just another way of you funneling and child trafficking or human trafficking. Because what at risk means, meaning that they're at risk for running away, right? 
So it's easy for them to say, yeah, we have a hub here or we have a school here that's for at-risk kids. But if those kids, quote unquote, get missing, then you can sit back and say, well, they ran away. And right. can, nobody can be penalized for it because they're already labeled as at-risk adults or children. So I was trying to find an article mm -hmm. about that, but it looked like they buried that article because it was an article talking about how Tyler Perry has a part of his um, his uh, land that's sectioned off just for that, right? But guess who else has an at-risk? Guess who else has at-risk school? Um, Huckerberg. Hoppo. Hoppo. Right? Who? So you remember Hoppo. LeBron... LeBron school is an at-risk school. Also, yeah. Yeah. So LeBron school has everything we're told the students need, and they're still failing, hmm. you know, because a lot of times it's a front. And now, I'm not saying that LeBron James is part of it, because sometimes what they'll do is they'll use people's names and they'll run with it. So if anything gets caught up, then you are the person's name attached to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's no yeah. it's no different. It's no different than this. No different than Oprah's school, right? So Oprah's school is caught up, is tied up with her name and everything like that. And guess what? When you have people like this who go up into the school, you know what I'm saying? And able to do some things with the children. And remember, yeah. she, she co-signed this man, John of God. I don't remember if you guys remember John of God, once hyped by man, Oprah. Now, talk about that all week. Yep. Yeah, accused of abusing hundreds of women. And some of the yep. girls in the school were missing. Some of the girls, um, what do you call it, uh, allegedly have said something about this man, um, you know, coming up there, doing some things with some of them. Allegedly, that's what the reports have said, right? So. Yeah. A lot of times you got to watch the people that you guys idolize because there's a lot of people out here that's selling their souls and you just don't know. And I thought one of the strangest things that I saw and then put my antennas up is that I don't know if you guys saw this. Prosecutors in Young Thug YSL Rico case tries to state that LeBron James is a member of Young Thug's YSL gang. What? That's strange. That's very Ugh. strange. Yeah, that, that's it's very, very strange. strange. It's very strange, right? Mm. Got you wondering, mm. though, huh? Got you wondering. It's interesting. Um, oh, okay. So you you did find it. It's uh. Let me see if this comes. Yeah, up. it's not official. It's at least part of the reason why it's difficult in finding it exactly is because it wasn't necessarily a news article that was published. Oh, he said gotcha. it during an interview. Gotcha. So yeah. I think it was with Gail with a uh, Gail King too. Uh, yes, yes. So, so you, yes, important. Bobby just sent me the uh, the link to it, and it did say it. I'll definitely uh, make sure that we. Um, We'll put it up, but that's what I have right now. You guys can definitely chime in and what you guys feel. I mean, it's so much, much bro. Like you, you laid out a lot right there, man. And, and let me just say this, man. Um, you know, as far as Jay Z and whatever the case may be, or you know, Oprah and. Like you said, or LeBron for that matter. I believe I believe the shit when it comes to Oprah, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But as far as Jay and LeBron, I know, like you said, a lot of people are probably going to push back and say, "Oh, you know, they ain't having to do it. They ain't know whatever the case may be." But and sometimes your comments just got to kind of kick in, bro. Like this weird bitch with the with the with the blood painting on the wall, all this weird shit. I wouldn't go within ten feet of that woman. You know what I'm saying? She calls herself a spirit cooker and all this shit. You could, dude, you couldn't pay me to be in a room with this woman. You understand? Mm. You could just look at her and she's just seething with evil. And then mm. she's writing all this weird shit on the wall. You understand what I'm saying? And, and you know, she she um has this really spooky um witch vibe, like a brother in the chat, Stephen, just said. She has this witch vibe about her. Mm. She oh, yeah. just 
straight up looks like evil incarnate, bruh. Mm. Why would you want these type of people? Why would you want to be around these type of people? You know, yeah. I'm looking at this person in the video and it don't sit right with my spirit. You dig? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can't understand for the life of me why you would want to partner up with this person, do a video with them, have them in charge of your imagery and so forth and so on. That don't make a lot of mm. sense. To me. Yeah. Um, as far as LeBron, he's been doing a lot of weird shit with that school. You know, um, supposedly, you know, it's a school to help at risk youth, help them get ahead, so forth and so on. This, that, and the third. Oh, you know, we're going to have the best teachers and all of them are white. Hmm. I'm just saying, I, I, bro. Let's not, forget, let's not forget his pizza parlor. Remember, he got a pizza shop. Right. You see? And it's like, dude, you couldn't employ no sisters. All white women, by the way. You couldn't employ no sisters for these at-risk youth. Even put a, you know, even put a few of them in there to make it look good. Since, you know, I know you, I know he probably had to play ball because, you know, he wants to take all the credit for oh, it. Really? He won't take all the credit for it until the school is failing, of course. But, like, you know, you should have made it a, a point of contention and say, hey, we got to have some black teachers in this school. It's going to be mostly black children. We got to have some black teachers. It is a must. This is the problem I have with a lot of these celebrities. They ain't got no backbone, man. You understand what I'm saying? And, like, you know, uh, um, Bobby was talking about I want to say real quick, I, I, I want to say that's done by design as well, because you remember, yep. black people are the most empathetic people out there. Black women ain't letting no shit fly like that. A kid get missing, shit, mm -hmm. that's what you're going to tell in everything. So, yep. you know, right. that's one of the reasons why they keep people that don't look like us up in those situations, because they turn a blind eye. Because right. remember, understand, during slavery, during shadow slavery, they would have black women serve as the caretakers, as the nannies, as the wet nurses for those right. for those young white children. Right. And there's a reason for that. It's, it wasn't just simply the fact that they that these women were property and they just saw them as you know you can handle the labor for us. There's a reason for that. They didn't trust a lot of other white women, other white people with their children because a lot of those slave owners, family members, or the overseers, and the other. Uh, white staff around there, they were just a real foul, janky stuff of them children too. So they knew and understood that the maternal and the paternal instincts of black people were stronger than their own. Remember just recently, about uh, three years ago, there was someone who put out that, there's a woman who made that, that very controversial post saying that she tells her, her young children, her white children, if you're lost or if you're in danger, go and find a black man. Yep. Go find a black man. Real talk. Because That's they real. understand that now it's not that black people don't have any issues in terms of, um, you know, uh, uh, sexual assault or endangering children, minors, because we're not perfect. We have our population as well, but the odds are much better with us than with them. Mm. Black people have the moral high ground at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Precisely. We, we have been the moral compass of this country since we got here. Well, the, the, the world. Those, the weren't, the right, those of us that weren't reclassified as Negro, because a lot of us were already here. But, you know, since we became a thing here, let me put it that way, you know, since the inception of this country, we have been the moral compass of this country. That's just what it is, you know, and um, so much for LeBron in that regard. Like, I, I really look at him sideways because of those things. Um, and then, you know, the, the other thing, as far as Oprah is concerned, don't even talk to me about Oprah. Everywhere Oprah goes, a molester follows. Everywhere. She's just seething with rapey, molestation, infested people. She was buddy-buddy with Epstein. She was buddy-buddy with Weinstein. Everybody with a steen that, you know, was doing some fucked up shit. She was buddy-buddy with their ass. You understand? Mango steen. Oh, uh, you Window did? Sheen, all them. Bruh. She was buddy buddy with John of God, who you know to this day, she, this was her spiritual advisor, right? At this point, if the FBI and the CIA and these other international law enforcement agencies, if they really wanted to crack down on sex trafficking, 
and sexual assault cases and sexual Follow violence over. cases. All you gotta do is make her an honorary age. Do- matter of fact, <laughs> real talk. Just matter of fact. Over. Make her the black female Raymond Reddington. Have her start the blacklist. The real blacklist. Real talk. Epi- new episodes yeah. every week. Go bust everybody. I guarantee you the world will become a safer talk. place in a year. Just put her in the helm. And it, it makes my head explode. Nobody ever talks about this. Oh, Oprah, she's a, she's such an icon. Says who? You, she Fuck is. Who? No, she bro. Is. Like real talk. The, everywhere she goes, there's a damn rapist or a pedophile that follows. But, and that's why she's an icon. The same way, the same way with the uh, with the Mexican drug cartels. They say that they have uh, that in the cartels they actually have um, uh, different saints that they pray to for um, for good luck in their in their drug transactions when they put the hits out of rivals, whatever. Right, right. All sexual traffickers, Harpo Winfrey is the patron saint of sex trafficking. They all go with their, they all go to their little prayer closet. They pray to the little image of Harpo, and pray for success. And moving Real as talk. many victims as possible. Harpo B. Because ain't, ain't no way. She she's like, yeah, she means she's like just Lane Maxwell all over again. Mm. You dig? Like, that's how Harpo is to me. Like, real talk. I mean, that, not to mention, I had to watch Tariq Nasheed to, to get this bit, this tidbit of information. Allegedly, you know, her father sexually assaulted some woman. She had to go. And, and, and cough up some paper to get his ass out of it. Did you know that? I heard, I heard about that one, probably from, oh. probably from um, Greek. I heard I about that one article. time and I never heard it again. I seen Damn. the article on Tariq Nasheed's show that. and I can't find it nowhere on the internet. They yeah. buried that. Wow. So yeah, you got, speaking of selling your soul, and I just said that from the very beginning. Anytime you see a black person that they pay these ridiculous amounts of money. I'm sorry, bro. You got to look at the shit a little. I mean, they said some shit like Oprah was making, I think it was like $250,000 a minute or some shit like that when she was doing her shit. I mean, she was a journalist. She interviewed people, but she wasn't all that. God damn. Like, she was not all that, you know, to, to warrant paying that type of money. So you got to ask yourself, what other agenda-driven shit is it that they got her there for? And you see what happened with Michael Jackson. This woman went and tried to make these people say some shit about Michael Jackson when they said Michael Jackson never did shit. You understand? She tried to make them. You know there what I'm saying? FBI investigations. Bruh. And find spit. <laughs> A black man investigated by the FBI twice and you didn't find nothing. But mm. you still gonna push the you still gonna push the point, really? And and this is an icon. This is a friend of Black society. This is a coon of all coons. This is coon of coons. You dig? Traitor. And people, it's just a race traitor. And people gravitate to this woman. Boy, we ain't ready, man. We we really ain't ready. I, I do disagree with you though, and I don't think Michelle Obama's gonna run. Not because they don't want her to. I just think Michelle Obama's just a little too hood for that shit. I don't think she wants to be bothered. I think Michelle Obama detests the whole political process. Even when she was in the White House, she was like, man, fuck this. She, she did not like that shit. You dig? So, even, even now, they keep trying to right. drum them out to rally right. support, and the people ain't feeling it. They keep trying to no, trap them out. She couldn't... Um... She couldn't run the first time because of Juicy Smoulet. He messed the whole shit up because his little stunt backfired. And she had to use, she had to go basically underneath the radar to go contact, uh, what's the, the lady named Fox? I think her name was Fox. Um, and get her to get him up out of trouble. That's why he didn't get in trouble like that. Mm. because Michelle Obama yep. made that call. If you read the article, oh, sure it is. talks about that. So if she would have ran, they would have dig deep into Juicy Smoulet's little stunt, and then it would have came right back to the political party. So in order to stop that, she had to back away from that and say that, no, that she didn't want to run and this and that and all type of other stuff. But now it's the desperation where they have they have no other person to do it, and she's going to run. Who You um, mean now? Wow, I, I would love to see that. I don't think so, bro. But hey, who knows? 
I don't put nothing past nobody at this point. You dig? I, I just don't. You know what I'm saying? I just don't. Because, you know, Joe Biden, he's senile. One foot in the grave. You know, no, nobody's I haven't really- seen enough. I haven't seen enough motion. But typically, you can tell who they're going to try and pony up because they're always going to try to trot folks out. But I've noticed that with them specifically because, again, they understand that they've never been in the past few decades – They've never been as successful or had as much of a fire beneath their feet as when they had the Obamas out there, even though the the, the post-Obama years have been very lackluster because that, yeah. that was a one-trick pony. They ran that once. The, look, we never had a black president. That was the thing a lot of people were banking on. And when it didn't pay dividends like people were hoping it did, that's when they really ran. There was, there was no other carrot to hold out in front of us. But what they have been doing, they've been very active behind the scenes trying to do Low key promotions, so they tried to go ahead and get them um, uh, podcast deals that has been big. They've had them out there trying to push books and try to use that to keep the name in the highlights. Recently, yeah. they had to promote that they, as uh, producers for that uh, Netflix film with uh, Bashar <laughs> Ali and those others recently. Yeah, yeah. So they've been trying to find ways to low key keep them relevant. But I haven't seen enough, and there hasn't been, from what I've seen, enough of a significant positive response and buzz to really suggest they're going to push. But um, they're desperate. And Biden is not a viable candidate for them. If that is their front runner, they're in trouble. So they might just try to break the glass again and hope that there's still some juice in the fire extinguisher. I think they're going to try to run the damage. I think think that's what they're going to try to do. You got to understand. You got to understand that um, we don't have no more political power. We don't. That voting stuff for Black Americans, you got over 10, 15 million immigrants that came in here from another world. Who have they seen the most? Who's the most iconic person that they see on TV? Michelle Obama. That's the reason why they had her doing press runs all over the country to get her face familiar. That's their wow. life. There's all type of there's there's all type of uh, publicity about her saying that she she's she wants to run in the last couple of days. Y'all never seen those articles? Oh, she has, okay, I, she hasn't. Not the last couple of days. So no, she's been going around no, he's, saying no, she's he's saying to that run. she has. I have, that? Okay, so yes, you want me okay. to pull the article just, up right now and put, and put it on the if, screen? If you say, if you that, say it, I believe that's what you, I was saying. Yeah. I was, I would say I hadn't seen anything yet. So if something recently changed, and that's different. But I was saying that because now is the time they're going to have to get out there. They just now, um, I saw the news that they just dropped or they're in the process of breaking this new uh, political podcast with uh, Angela hey, Rye uh, Cross and, and, oh, and your boy, God. your your, yep, your, your, frat, your frat brother, Aunt, Aunt Andy Gilly. Oh, oh, yeah. God. Oh, God. He's, he's no, bad. not him. <laughs> so, so that's who they're going to interview. That's going to be the new plantation book breakfast club for political grounds. Basically. So, yeah. So that now they're going to begin the push. So that means, and it's 2024, top of the year. Not a lot of time. So, you know, that's going to be a full court press. They're going to be shoving as much of this garbage down your eyes, ears, nose, throat other body holes as they can. So be on the lookout for that. It's gonna be nonstop. Mm. Mm. Nonstop. Nonstop. Yeah. I, I'm, gonna put, <laughs> I'm gonna put everything I I I I still gotta hear it. You know what I'm saying? I, I see the articles where they're saying that she wants to run for president. I still gotta hear her say it, but I'm going to put everything I can into deflating that goddamn candidacy because boy that's the last goddamn thing we need right now. The last time we had a black person in office with the name Obama, they sat on their bitch ass and allowed black people to be slaughtered in the damn streets. I will never forgive that nigga for that. You understand? And I, I'm not a fan of this bucktooth wench anyway. You understand? I'm just not. You know what I'm saying? And and I don't want to see any more black people get killed by the Obamas, you know, sit back and do nothing. Fuck that. No, we, we, we got to push that. Everything we got against that shit. You know, as long as like, as long as they got the the Trump boogeyman card on the table, people are going to flock that way. 
I don't think so. I, I think it's kind of old. I, I I hear you. I know some people will, but I think it's kind of old. I think there's not enough people, but a lot of people not drinking that Kool-Aid no more, man. A lot of people are like, man, True. fuck this shit. No tangible. It's, it's oh. burnout. See, the thing is, and this is, it's, it's a psychology thing across the board. Fear is a very powerful motivator. Fear can can rally people to um to do things. It can really get that on. It can make that difference. But the problem is, fear doesn't matter if it's in sports, if it's in politics, if it's in on the battlefield. Fear, as powerful as it is, it's very draining. It's very depleting. You know, when you're in that when you're in that fight or flight state of mind, you know you can get that that energy to defend your um your family. You've seen stories about um. Mothers and fathers lifting cars about their children, all kind of stuff, just doing yeah. superhuman acts. It's powerful. But that adrenaline, that burns out really, really quickly. And if you have to keep on tapping into that, it gets to the point where even if the urge is greater than it's ever been, if you are burnt out, if you haven't replenished, you're not going to be able to even lift a pinky to respond. So they've been using that push and that push of that nonstop. A lot of black people are exhausted by that. And so yeah. some may even say... Yeah, we, we we can't let Trump get back in office, but there's no oomph behind that. They need nah. they need something different, and they, they refuse because the only thing they can do left is give us tangibles, and they, they refuse to do that. Yes, yeah, but you, you, gotta under, so. you gotta understand that the the last election exposed a lot of cheating that went on, because if you think that Biden broke. Obama's record for the most votes to get in office? That. I don't buy that shit. I don't. I really so don't. So you know, it, you know it's cheating going on. Yeah, but there's the no thing is... That much. But that's what I'm saying. So all you have to do, this is, this is why they do these type of things to get the temperature. So right now they're checking the temperature of Michelle Obama. They're going to see how much they can get people to rally by rally behind her and show that the people love her. And if they I have get, enough people to push out there to say that they love her, that cheating shit is going to happen again, bro. Well, I, I get what you're saying. Two things, two points. I think that, you know, people will be taking measures against it to prevent it from happening again. I think that people, once you do that shit, I think people figure you out. One. And two, I don't think that the that they will have the people to you know fall all over themselves over Michelle Obama. I just don't. You even have coons that used to be you know drinking the Obama Kool Aid, criticizing Obama now, talking about yep. how he should have done much more for black people because people are mm -hmm. listening to us. And when I say us, I'm talking about people like us, people like the new uh, black media. You understand what I'm saying? People are listening to these guys, Tariq and you. Jason Black and I Black Truth. Black Truth. People, people are I listening hear to you. Them. I hear you. I understand that, but you got to understand the the optics of it. It's not a fair game. It's all about illusion because they control it. They control the this. They control the oh, no. system. Yeah, yeah. They no, control. we're just saying that whatever the response is. Mm -hmm. whatever, I mean, whatever the outcome is, if they want to go ahead and um, push them in, they're going to do that. But we're saying that it's not going to be organic if, in terms of what the actual well, no, 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 the streets are no. saying. They no. lost. They can't do it. Yeah, now, we, they're going to try to find ways to, to dress it up when they're saying, yeah, they're going to try to find a way to put makeup on the corpse and clothes to make it look like it's alive. But yeah. right. the reality is it's dead. They, they can't do that. Yeah. Yeah, no, they not. They don't. It, they're all. This world is ran off of optics. It's ran off illusion. All they have to do, just like okay, remember they had they had um, Biden in a in, inside of a church, and the people don't turn their back on him. Then they put Biden in a church where I guess they must have had a bunch of sambos and and paid ops in there to make it look like it's a regular church, but it was really motherfuckers in there that they paid in there. And then they was all in there talking about Chen, Biden, 2024, Biden. It's all about optical illusions, right? Mm -hmm. I get and it. Even with, even with Biden, Biden is, is done. Nobody's fucking with Biden because Biden's in office now and ain't nobody running with that. So there's no hope. 
behind Biden. See, that thing about the Obama is they, they feed you with hope. And because Obama, Michelle Obama, is a fresh start for people, as in their eyes, because now it's a black woman who they feel black women are more have more empathy. Um, it's also a woman that don't have the back uh, lash that as Kamala Harris. She sold books, and her charisma is what they're banking on. So they're gonna you're gonna see them push her out there and tour her around and get the temperature. But if they get to portray enough temperature, like this woman is rocking and people want her in office, they're going to do, now the optics play in where we got the image out there. Now we'll do what we need to do to push her through. Uh, look, I hear what you're saying and I, I, I don't put it past them to try it. I just don't think they have a fucking chance in hell. I, I think that people, uh, dare I say, not because people are particularly intelligent, <laughs> that that that's definitely not it but people just ain't buying shit that they're saying no more they're just not buying any of it you dig they tried the 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 gender the gender identity politics with come at me they already played that card this bitch got an office and ain't do shit you dig so like no it, i just don't see it it could happen who knows because black people have very short memories you understand what i'm saying and you know who knows anything is possible but I don't see it happening, man. I just don't. They'll try it, but I don't see it happening because at the end of the day, I, these these people have done nothing for them. And somebody's going to bring that up. You know what I'm saying? And people are starting to listen more astutely now to people who are making valid points instead of just voting. Oh, I'm going to vote for her because she's a woman. Oh, I'm going to vote for her because she's black. People tired of that shit. We've tried it. Twice doesn't work. I get, I get we'll that. See. I get that. But we'll see. I just feel like that's where the influx of immigrants come in. Agree. Because their oh, their, their interpretation, their interpretation of racism and their interpretation of everything is way different than ours. And they True. just go along with the program. So that's True. where the dangers it, behind that should come in. Two things I remember the, the Democrat. The Democrats been fighting heavy to get their ass some damn IDs to go vote. You know what I'm saying? Well, see, so. this is the thing. You got you got two issues with the immigrant class. You know what I'm saying? One, most of the motherfuckers can't vote. That's the long and short of it. Most of the overwhelming majority of them can't vote. And number for two, for now, for now, I don't think they're gonna they, be able they, to. They, you know they, they're working on, but. For now, the Republicans are pushing back heavy against that shit, and they got they got a leg to stand on. Because first of all, these motherfuckers that's, don't even belong. That's one here. good thing. It's one. First good of thing. all, they don't belong here. So you know what I'm saying? They have a very good point on that. And number two, when they do vote, they vote Republican. These Democrats are dumb as a box of rocks because they keep bringing these people over here that vote against them. I mean, bruh, you you have to be. They They're can't not. do anything else. The oh, like I said before, the only thing they can finally do for black people now to get black people to be back on the wagon is to actually give tangibles. That's so the only crazy. thing they've got left. They're, they're not going to do it, so they're going to try to. You have to understand these. You are dealing with people who will literally, not metaphorically speaking, they will literally get a big old hunting knife. And cut the nose off their face, bleed out all of themselves just to spite us. Yeah, they will literally real. do that. It makes no sense, but that's how deep the disdain, the hatred is. It's it, it's yeah. a psyche. This goes way, this goes all the way back to the Donna Channel slavery and white supremacy. Mm. They will do yeah. anything. They will commit. They will come. They will commit suicide if they think it's going to undercut us. Just mm -hmm. to stop us from advancing anywhere. That's how sick it is. Real but talk. these people come from these other countries, and a lot of other countries, they share a lot of the same ideals, the same visions, the same culture as the conservative Republican Party does. The reason yep. why so many of them gravitate towards Donald Trump is because he represents a lot of the strong man dictator ways in their countries. You look at places like Hugo Chavez, uh, Fidel Castro, before yeah. Castro took power, Fulgencio Batista. All these other officials, 
a lot of these countries, they have the same type of leadership. So even the rhetoric, even the way that Maine's Republicans speak, it's in sync with what they know culturally. This is culture that they're trying to change. Just because you brought them over here and did them a solid doesn't mean that they're going to be on board with you. Some will, but not enough. Basically, Mm -hmm. you're bringing over more of the same split lines. Because remember what I said before, black people are the only racial demographic that largely votes skewed towards one side, either one side or the other. In our case, Democrats. Everybody else, more or less, it's it's about a a, a 60-40, in some cases, split. It's more or less divided Mm -hmm. almost equal along the lines. And it's going to be small things that happen during the course of the, between election years, that's going to determine which way they're swaying. But it's largely balanced. Mm -hmm. They have, there's no racial demographic out there. That's going to be who we are, who we have been historically on either side. Mm -hmm. And when you're bringing over people who largely have conservative backgrounds, you're bringing over a majority that's largely going to lean over there. So, the Democrats are going to have to do something reckless and brash. And the best thing that we can do is to stay home and not vote for anyone that is not going to give us tangibles. No symbolism, no backdoor. No, nah, it's going to have to be loud or proud on a stage in writing for the whole world yeah. to see. you got to write the check live on TV for us to see so there can be no backing out. Well, we didn't mean that it's the only play they have left. The question mm-hmm. is, are they going to do what is necessary for their party to be successful again? Or mm-hmm. are they going to be true to white supremacy and realize even if we're not the ones holding the knife to cut the pie, as long as white supremacy is cutting the pie, we're going to go ahead and play ball. That's the question. Is their greed mm-hmm. going to overtake their commitment to upholding the principles of white supremacy? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, we shall see. Anything can happen, man. I, I don't rule anything out because mm-hmm. I've seen some crazy shit in just the last month. You dig? I, I have no idea what's going to happen next. I, I, I admit it. You know, you mm-hmm. might be right, but I think I think that's a tall order, brother. I, I don't see that. Talk happening. to him, James. Cut the check. Snip, snip, snip. <laughs> there you go. Real talk. Where the cash at? That's where, where the cash at? That's where I'm at. That's where I've been. And, you know, Thank goodness we have our platform. We're going to go ahead and put a little more money into it to grow the following. And we're going to be echoing that same message. Cut the check. We don't want to hear the bullshit. At the end of the day, that's what it's about. Anybody who's exactly. who's against reparations, black people don't need to be voting for at all. You know, what I did in the last cycle and what I'm going to do going forward, I'm going to, and I'm going to tell everybody this. I'm going to start parroting this now because the election's in November, so and this is another thing that's so sloppy. If they wanted to run Michelle Obama, mm-hmm. they should have started that shit from last year. You understand what I'm saying? You can't just, oh, put her out there and all of a sudden, no, it's not enough time. Because first of all, you have to come up with some excuse to not run Biden. Oh, you know, his health is teetering and whatever. Make up a sob story so he can bow out gracefully. And then you present your newer, better candidate. You understand? But the way they're doing it is real sloppy. It's it's January. Yeah, but you got you got to understand. Michelle Obama doesn't need to be pushed as a person that you don't know. She's been around for eight plus years under her her husband, and she's been doing the book tour and been on podcasts and everything. So she's built she's built up her personality. And then on top of that, it's also you got to understand when you're doing with warfare and a person that is easily targeted or picked apart, you want to place them in the race at the last minute. It's kind of like when you're at it's kind of like you're in um, you're in a courtroom. Right. And a motherfucker, you do all the fucking proceedings and going down and a motherfucker be like, yeah, I'm ready to call this witness. And they like, hold on. That witness ain't on the goddamn fucking list. And you like. Uh, yeah, but I got the witness here. And they're like, no, nah, uh, you know, we need time to un- to see who this witness is. Yeah. It's the same thing. You know what I'm saying? The short that's distance not, of it. That's not going to work. You don't have enough evidence to get and dial down to discredit that person. So I think that was a strategic move on the Democrats to throw her in around this time. Because also when you put her out here around now, for the next three months, 
people going to be worried about their damn income tax checks and doing all type of nigga shit. So uh -huh. they're not even going to be worried about that right there. And that gives more press run and a more opportunity through the airwaves to get that whole thing going. You know what I'm saying? And then by the time you look around, it's, it's damn near back to school. And then right there is the election. So no. I think it was strategically done that way. That's, That's just my thought. If the, and you might be right. If that was the case, that is a very poor strategic thought. They need to fire that strategist. Um, that ain't going to work. Because at the end of the day, no. They, we, we know of Michelle Obama. We don't know shit about how she would govern. We don't know shit about her worldview. We know she was the president's wife. We don't know this woman. You understand? And you, this is why, because the other people who are in the presidential race our president, uh, I'm sorry, our governor is a prime example. People know who he is, the governor of the state of Florida. Everybody knows him. He has a public profile. He's had a he's been around longer than Michelle Obama. You know what I'm saying? As far as his public profile is concerned. But you have to build yourself as a presidential candidate. It's different from a personality. You're a presidential candidate now. That's why they run for they announce at least two to three years out. And then they run. You got to campaign. You got to get funding. You got it's a whole bunch of shit you got to do. It ain't enough time. Sorry, it, that, that's just not gonna. That's a terrible strategy. If somebody thought of that, they must have pulled that out their ass. That's not going to work. But hey, man, again, anything's possible. But I don't see. It. I think that's, that's a very yeah. poor strategy. That's not. That's not how you you're, move. You're, man. you're talking to gal. You're talking to galvanizing. Black people who, for the most part, are mostly Caribbean that will give a vote based on fear of Republicans being pushed, that Republicans are the demons, um, and that the Democrats are the better uh, choice. And then two, these people like symbolism. They, they're the ones who vote for uh, getting a holiday or vote for eating catfish nuggets and dancing. These are the ones that go out and do the electric slides everywhere they go. So even if you galvanize the coon class and then you add on whatever you need to add on, and I say the optics of it, it can be a it can be a strategy that could land her in, in the office. Any, any, like I said, anything's possible. And I just want to say most black people are not immigrants. There's only 12% of the population that's immigrants and 9% are um, second generation Americans. So most black people, most black people in this country are black Americans, not immigrants. Um, but yeah, I mean, still, like you said, anything is possible. You know, what I'm I, I, I don't. That is one point that you're making that I, I cannot refute. Anything is possible. I, I ain't even going to bullshit. I just think that's a very poor strategy. We'll let it play out and we'll see. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's only one way to right. find out. But um, yeah. I, I, your, I mean, get your, get your popcorn fear, and your Yeah, my fear is that you might actually be right. Because, again, when Obama was in office, it was nowhere near worth, you know, how much black people had to suffer that's what concerns and scares me you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. black people really mm -hmm. suffered and a lot of black people were murdered did not get justice and this sorry coward ass nigga just sat in the white house and allowed it and i can never mm -hmm. forgive that shit. definitely but. all right so we want to um get back to the selling out i did want to show some videos of some candidates that Cat Williams pointed out that sold out. <laughs> Some of them he felt didn't. And, and, what and while, it we're was, at it, yeah. while we're at it, to me, that is the epitome of sell. Just real quick before you do that, that is the epitome of selling your soul. What Obama did. You know, mm -hmm. you go ahead and, you know, you, uh, you allow yourself to be selected, because that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Uh, to be president of the United States, you get into the White House and you do absolutely nothing for black people. You turn your nose up at black people. In fact, you preside over the, 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 the greatest 
open slaughter of black people that has taken place in the United States history. That's selling your soul. Boy, that that's whoo, that's next level selling your soul. Well, go go right ahead, brother. Just stay at the stay. I'm just trying to stay the topic. No, yeah, you're right. That is selling your soul. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and so as you guys see, it's just yeah. a bunch of guys, a bunch of black men that have been um, you know, in wearing dresses. Sad. Uh, that's what Cat Williams had brought out and talked about. And we see various celebrities that have done that. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes you wonder, you know, what is it that's going on that makes these people want to throw on a dress like that? Um, also, people didn't even realize that um, Dave Chappelle, as much as we like Dave Chappelle, Dave Chappelle threw on a dress. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> no, we got some great guests coming in. <laughs> hey, what are you guys laughing at so much? I think I fanned them too much, jerks. All right, let's uh, let's plug a new video of Baba Boobie's banana. Baba Boobie. Well, what do you think of it? Well, how was I? Hey, Robin, what's the matter with you? You have a goal? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I do. Really? <laughs> Probably a chest goal. <laughs> hey, Robin, you taking temperature? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we just stick the thermometer. <laughs> <laughs> time out, time out. What is wrong? I should have never worn these shoes. These don't match my purse. Blinking, fix your boobs. You look like a bleeding Picasso. Oh, goodness gracious. Wow. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I would like to say, I, just in all fairness to Chappelle, I think that's yeah. before he woke up. Um, yeah, you can tell that yeah. was mad. I was trying to figure out, first of all, if he was 14 years old in the first one. Like, geez. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's before he woke up. Nonetheless, he yeah, still yeah. did it. He still uh, did yeah. it. But that's before that's, he woke up. Yeah, that's that's when he woke up. He did uh, the whole Oprah thing, and then he jetted to he understood the significance yeah. of everything. But you know, we we here like to just talk truth to power. If we're gonna if we're gonna talk about something, you know, we don't leave everything off the table. Because um, fair is fair. Want people... Exactly. Fair is fair. Uh, an another um, video I wanted to show that shows about selling your soul. I think this was one of the most. Oh gosh, when I talk about uh, uh, running your hand down a chalkboard type of situation, <laughs> this is how cringing this feels. Go ahead, man. Break it down. When you really break it down. We're just two honks and a Negro serving the Lord. We're just two honks and a Negro singing our song. A little something. Go ahead, man. Break it down. When you really break Woo! it down. We're just two honks and a Negro serving the Lord. We're just two honks. Oh God. Oh, God. oh, my God, digger. <laughs> Woo! And we wanted to just oh, show you that sometimes, you know, even with all the programming, um, and you have these people out here doing just weird pranks, even the pranks now have gotten to some sultry type shit. Um, so I want to show you this, and uh, <laughs> y'all can run. <laughs> I don't know. Dude. I don't know what's what's going on with these guys and these pr these Bruh. pranks. But um, <laughs> nigga, <laughs> the devil knows who to try. To try, nigga. <laughs> the devil knows. Donny. Oh my God. Oh man. I saw one of those videos and I could tell it wasn't scripted because I mean, you know. You can act, you can play, but rage ha rage has a certain flavor to it. It has a certain very uh, uh, almost fight or flight response. It's almost contagious. Like you start picking right. up the fear waves off it. And right. I saw one dude. He um, it was this prank where they were in this mall, one of those big malls, those huge ones. And there was an escalator going up and down, 
and big escalator mm. going up and down. And this guy's idea of a prank was he'd be on the other end going down, what have you, while the while the elevator is going up. And he would go ahead and he would purposely wait, put his hand on the other uh, railing of the escalator, and he would intentionally let it brush over a man's hand and look at him in his face while going down. He did it a few times. The guy's like, what the hell's wrong with him? Yeah. One dude he did that with, dude started running down the other end. He's like, no, no, it's just a prank, just a prank. He's like, no, nah, I don't, I don't want to hear none of that. Right. He was all business. And they made sure to cut it off when they realized we're, we're in danger. But they keep playing these games. And I've seen a couple where I generally think someone's about to get popped the shake. Because they were playing with some hood dudes on another one where uh-huh. dude was playing stupid, goofy talk about, hey, man, what set you is? Like, huh? I'm trying to figure out what set you in. And you could tell the street dudes because, like, yeah, and a couple times he almost got that work. And I'm like, dude, you really playing with your life with some clicks and views? I, clicks. You watch too much TV, my boy. This is real, Dang, but bro, like that shit. Wow, yeah, they do that. The lust they for attention. Man, all right, now. <laughs> I told you the other day about them people, about them, um, about them kids that was in that SUV doing fishtail and stuff, sitting out the window. Trying oh, to yeah. get um, views to go viral, and the and the SUV flipped over, and yeah. two of them died. And the other guy's really really into. I told you, these people will do anything for some likes and some eyeballs. They were setting yeah. themselves on fire a couple years ago, man. Um, the top, the Tide Pod Challenge. Yeah. Maybe snorting cinnamon powder. I mean, bro, it's, I I just can't, bro. I, I can't, man. I can't. I, I literally just can't with these guys, man. I, I don't get. We, it. We live in a society where, from childhood, from birth, from birth, actually, when Simon say childhood, from birth, mm-hmm. they are conditioning people to be zoned out. Yeah, and they are only in, they're only capable enough collectively to perform basic tasks, to do jobs, to keep society going. But in terms of actually thinking, mm-hmm. to be able to process and reason, use logic. To make sense of the world around them, to to see more than four feet in front of their face, that's not what's encouraged, and that's yeah. why usually the people that can do so well compared to the rest. But they want right. you out here on autopilot. They just push a button here, turn a knob, flick a switch, and you perform your designated function. You 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 do what is necessary for them to get their outcome. That's how they like it. And you yeah. see a lot of people. They don't. They don't. They don't know the hand from the ass. Real talk. You're, right. uh, You're absolutely right. It's terrifying. It's terrifying, bro. Like, but that's what it. That's where we are. But to whom much is given, much is required. Make sure you know. All you can do is for those who know, make sure you ain't out here catching lack. And the people that don't know, they they do the best they can. God bless their hearts. Those of you who know better, and you sitting on it. You the dumbass, not them. You the dumbass because you know different. Mm-hmm. And you out Correct. here acting the way they are. There's no, there's excuses for them. You ain't got none. So, mm-hmm. this is Correct. Life. Correct. All right. Well, shoot. We're not gonna keep it long tonight. I know it's you guys been out here, uh, definitely uh, rocking with us tonight. Hopefully, we have brought to you guys a great episode. Um, and just to show you that, you know, you always got to keep your eyes open because we're out here dealing with systemic racism. And in that system, there's always going to be uh, Sambo sellouts um, that will undermine uh, the empowerment um, journey that a lot of us are on. Um, And in that process, we have to make sure that we are not idolizing these people or even rubbing shoulders close to these people. As soon as they do something, we check them. Um, and the others that we don't respect, we ostracize them out. Um, and that's how we move forward and um, get to the level that we need to get to and not being pacified and watered down and being on the same boat and mission that we've been going on for the last three, 400 years. Mm-hmm. So definitely uh, make sure that you uh, stay on point um, I do want to. I do want to show you these three things that that's a must for us, right? If you guys agree, uh, let me know. Three major decisions that will impact your health and, and your life. 
um, is where you live, who you hang around, and who you decide to marry. I think these are the most three most uh, empowerment things that you can do um, that will get you on the level of uh, being a powerful person and also creating great legacy. If you can manage to understand the implications of why these three are so important, um, you'll get to that next level real, 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 real quick. Um, I know Major definitely has number three knocked off um, and me and uh, Bobby is um, working on three. Um, <laughs> but as you, as you guys can know, um, once you get that person that you marry, uh, it does a lot for you. It does a lot for you. And the reason why I say it does a lot for you is because it's done a lot for Denzel Washington, right? Mm -hmm. Happy 40 years of marriage, um, Pauletta Person and Denzel Washington. No. And no. Couple with a lot of Let's go. met in 1977 while shooting Wilma together, and they started dating one year later. According to the Access Hollywood, the Malcolm X actor proposed three different times before Pearson finally accepted. They said, I do, in, in 1983 and renewed their vows in 1995. They are currently share four children together. And why I say that is so impactful and so powerful is that this man has a wife and you haven't seen him doing no fugazi ass shit. No. You haven't seen him playing no roles like that. He mm -hmm. ain't throwing no damn dress or nothing like that. You know, mm -hmm. it, yep. it says a lot when you have a person in your corner that makes you understand who you are as a person and not sell your soul as a person. LeBron James, we could talk about LeBron James. I don't see LeBron James with no fugazi stuff going on. Matter of fact, he kind of distanced himself from Dwayne Wade. You know what I'm saying? And I think a lot of it has to do with Savannah as well. You know what I'm saying? Savannah ain't with that shit. You know, one thing about women, they're not going to let their household be contaminated by somebody else. Well, Black woman that's full of caliber is going to check that shit and be like, hey, man, you know, that's your boy and all, but you got to do what you got to do. You know what I'm I, saying? Well, I will say this. LeBron hasn't yeah. done fugazi shit lately. Yeah. Uh, LeBron James has dressed in drag before. Uh, mm -hmm. LeBron James has also, um, yeah, he's dressed in drag a couple of times, actually. LeBron James, uh, was wearing a purse when he walked out of that, um, that, that meeting. Um, he walked out of some meeting somewhere and he was carrying his purse. He did it real zesty too. Um, you know, and a couple other things, you know, but I think like you said to, to her credit, I think Savannah probably, you know, pulling by the coattails a little bit. Hey, my nigga. What you doing? You know what, I'm saying? <laughs> like, what, what, what the fuck? You, you my husband. You are a man. So, thank God. You know, I, I I'm pretty sure because you know Hollywood. I'm sure they're all in his ear. They trying yeah. to get it through all kind of shit, right? I'm sure that sister has helped him level off. Let's say, let's say it that way. I haven't mm -hmm. seen no fuck shit from LeBron in a very long time, and I'm mm -hmm. glad he's distanced himself from Dwayne Wade because Dwayne Wade is a weirdo. Um, mm. and that, that would be a very bad influence on his children to have this person, you know, who's basically what it looks like, you know, pimping his kids out. Like, what, what are you doing, man? Like, you know, you, you I, I don't know anything about this little boy besides how gay he is. I know nothing about this child mm. except how gay he is and, you know, or how actually at first he was trans, remember? Now he's mm -hmm. gay. You dig? And it's mm -hmm. like they can't even make up their mind what he is. You know, and they, they're always using this for free publicity and, you know, whatever the case may be. And it's like, dude, that's not everybody's business. It's really not. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if you have a child that's gay, I don't even I don't even knock your child being gay. What I knock is you using that shit you know, as, you know, wearing it as a, as a star, you know, like you got a gold star on your forehead because your child is gay. That somehow makes you special. We should pay more attention to you. You should get preference. Mm -hmm. but you dig like that, that, that we had, he has three other kids, like brother James in the chat says, he has three other kids we don't, we never even hear about. Mm -hmm. So that's foul as hell. 
You know what I'm saying? But I mean, bro, like real talk back to selling your soul. You know, um, yes, I think brother LeBron has been, you know, the sister that he's with has helped keep him grounded, which is why I personally uh, am in the business of promoting brothers marrying sisters Mm. for a number of reasons. Sisters live longer than us. When you die, you pass your wealth on, as Dr. Umar says, to another black person. The Mm. wealth stays in your community. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, only a sister is going to understand your experience as a black man, period. Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of black men, you know, talk all this stuff about sisters ain't this, sisters ain't that. And, you know, women of other races are so much better. But if we're being honest, it's the type of sisters that a lot of these brothers are choosing. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Because you can look at the sexy reds of the world, and you can tell what that is. Mm. But somebody went and knocked their ass up a few months ago, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Brothers, I, I'm going to say this the third episode straight. I'm saying this. I'm going to say it till motherfuckers start listening. You got to leave not the true. trash outside. You got to leave the trash outside. Mm-hmm. I know, you know, it looks good. It sounds good. You think it's going to feel good. It's going to be an experience, but even if you do that and you do some in and out shit, you put them on a 60 day plan, you don't keep them around, bruh, you still, y'all are doing too much permanent shit with these trash ass females. You're getting them pregnant, you're marrying them. No. Shouldn't last no longer than a month. 60 days tops if you gotta do it. You know, um, and, you know, to, to one more thing, you know, I see, you know, that article, Pauletta Pearson, she goes by Pauletta Washington. That was some mm. slick shit. That's some slick shit they did. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? The, uh, the think, that, that, yeah, well, she goes by Pauletta Washington. I think she somebody doesn't... wrote, I think somebody wrote that. That was a, a caption mm-hmm. on the, on the pitch, if oh, I'm not her, mistaken. I don't even know why they would write that. She goes by Washington. She don't, she don't but, use her maiden name. But they on that anti Simone Simone Biles Owens energy, right? Yeah, you know, so like I said, that's, somebody that's with an agenda on. did that. You know, she goes by Pauletta Washington, and mm. yes, she has held that brother down. A lot is to be said about you when you got a sister next to you, and you know, people say talk about sisters' attitude, sisters' attitude. I'm not gonna co-sign sisters having an attitude. But I will co-sign sisters being assertive, having a mind of their own, and calling out bullshit when they see it. And mm-hmm. a lot of you niggas, I'm going to keep it a buck, you don't like that from sisters. That's the part of sisters that you don't like. When a sister does not have an attitude, but she calls your bullshit out, you ain't feeling that. You understand? And that's something that you have to grow into understanding benefits you. You don't want a whole bunch of yes men around you that do everything you say. You want somebody that will respectfully challenge you when you out here fucking up. That's the long and short of it. And I land my plane there. Shout out to those brothers and sisters that are doing it right. I love it. I love it. Definitely. You said we had had the end, right? Yeah, I'm about to do the crown check real quick. Um, So I definitely want to do the crown check. uh, And I think this was dope. I found the sister. Um, and I couldn't believe how incredibly dope this was. Mm-hmm. Uh, I followed the sister when I saw her, but I'm not sure if you guys saw this. But um, meet the Georgia herbalist who bought 87 acres of land to establish a farm in an eco village. Um, wow. And a sister has, she goes on the internet, um, she goes on uh, social media as the, the girly black farmer. Okay. Right. Female black farmer. Um, I own 87 acres of land in Georgia. Herbalist, grab your land and buy, uh, grab your land buying course. So she also teaches you how to go and buy your land. She shows you how to farm because she went out there and started the farming herself. This is her page uh, with different videos on there. Uh, you guys could go check it out and everything like that. But I thought that was pretty dope, you know, in an era where um bill gates um when we talk about selling souls and bill gates is one of those selling their soul and sold their soul um that has been out here buying up a bunch of farmland 
and uh, for the sister to get on board and grab her own farmland and farming her own stuff and not out here trying to get uh, uh, different fruits and vegetables that has vaccines uh, implemented in it um, and starting her own wave and showing other people how to do that. I thought that was pretty dope uh, to definitely give her the crown check tonight. Uh, so yeah, I think that's pretty dope. So you guys can fill, uh, follow her, the girly black farmer on IG. I'm and that's all I have for you guys tonight. That's what it is. That's what it is. Salute I'm following her right now. Salute the sister real quick. Just close it out. Yes. And I just want to say real quick that selling your soul does not apply solely to celebrities. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. I want you to understand that people, um, all these little coons that you see in the office, you understand what I'm saying? That, that that's bowing and scraping and licking ass. You can't tell where the manager's ass ends and their face begins. That's selling your soul. You understand what I'm saying? You know, anytime you're in a position where you're doing something that is against your principles and against your dignity, against your pride, you know, for some type of gain, for some type of short term gain, even a long term gain, whatever it is. Remember the reason that you have your principles and your integrity. You're supposed to be uncompromising when it comes to your integrity. It's literally all you have. And once you've gone to the other side, so to speak, you will never be the same. Guard your integrity with your life. Be real. Be intentional. And do things that you would be proud of. That you would be proud of and that your children will be proud of and that your children's children will be proud of. And be unapologetic about it. I'll let my play. That's what's up. Drake. Absolutely. <sighs> Um, this was a heavy one, uh, not necessarily as entertaining as some of our previous ones, but then again, uh, we try to do our best to go ahead and mix the entertainment, mix the laughs, mix the jokes, uh, with the real talk. So the night mm. was a bit more on the heavy side. It's a bit more of the lean protein, a bit more of the complex carbs, not as many sweets, not as many much junk here, uh, but no less necessary fat more yeah. so. Uh, the reality is this, this was important to go into and the areas we touched on were important to uh, make reference to because a lot of these things play into selling your soul. When you talk about this, uh, people like to go ahead and get um, all literal and imagine you're at the crossroads or something and you're making a deal with the devil and doing a handshake and some stuff. And whether or not that does go on or doesn't go on, I'm not here to say that's not my place to make mention. But what I do know is that every last one of us, from the highest, most noble person to the lowest rat in the street, we have a sense of integrity. We have a sense of pride. We have a sense of self. And even though we may have different moral codes, we may have different values, we may have different ideals that we hold and philosophies that we cherish, we all have our boundaries, even if they're weak and flimsy ones. There are certain things that we know we should and shouldn't do, certain things that we know we should and shouldn't say. We know what too far looks like and feels like for us. And as we grow and advance in life, that's going to change. Some of us want to become more moral. Some of us might backtrack a little bit and become a little bit more liberal with uh, how far we're willing to bend and give on things. Mm. But the reality is we all have a price. Like, like the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase said, everyone has a price. Mm. The question is, is it possible for yours to ever be reached? What are you willing to sell? What are you willing to give up in order to attain certain things, whether it's attention, money, accolades, recognition, esteem, whatever the case may be. Unfortunately, we live in a world where people have the resources, they have the time, the energy, they have the means to throw all kinds of temptations your way. Ultimately, it boils down to, are you going to make decisions that compromise your sense of self-worth, mm. that compromise your reputation, your honor, your value? Are you going to do things that cause you to avoid looking in mirrors? And people think that's a joke or that's some kind of a 
figurative thing, but that's real. There's some people that genuinely cannot stand to look at themselves. Mm. You know, True. there's a reason why in Hollyweird you hear about so many different actors. It doesn't even raise an eyebrow anymore. It's, to, it's a, really expected, to be honest. But in Hollyweird and the music industry and all these different avenues, you hear so many stories about people developing drug habits and addictions, alcoholism, always catching DUIs. They're always a, a mess, come from one drunken binge or drug fuel bend to the next or sex addiction and everything else. The reason for that is a lot of people are trying to cope because they've made some deals and decisions that they thought they were coming out on top. But truth be told, as time went on, they felt worse and worse about themselves. Well, see. To the point where now just to function, they have to get shit-faced, they have to get trashed, they have to get sloshed. Being sober hurts. Being in your right functional mind, all your faculties intact, it's torture. Mm. And sometimes they'll sing about it. Sometimes they'll make a joke in an interview or they ask certain questions and they're smiling or they're laughing. But you can tell this pain there or that it's uncomfortable, it's awkward. It's not humor, but it's like misery. And it's mm. not worth it, man. It's... There is no price that you could put on being able to put your head down at night and get a good night's sleep and wake up refreshed. You got however many hours or winks of sleep in and you feel every last bit of it. It's a blessing to be able to do that because there are some people right now that can't do that. Mm. They got to pop all kind of sleeping pill, this, they got to drink all kind of crazy stuff. They got to take all kind of drugs just to close their eyes properly. When they wake up, it's like they didn't sleep at all. They, they they were out cold, but they didn't really rest. Not really. They can't mm -hmm. dream properly. So yep. you have to bear in mind, it's not just about the perception of others. It's not about the image you're pushing other people. Be selfish for a minute. It's about yourself. It's about your own quality of life. And the people yeah. closest to you. Do you want to make decisions and do things that are going to cause your children to look at you with respect and honor? I value mom. I value dad. I want to be like that. My dad is my hero. My mom is my role model. Do you want your children to be able to say that honestly about you? Or do you want your children to be esteeming other people higher than you because they realize when they look at mom or dad, that's the way to have them on my wall. Think about these things. I know in the in the immediacy of the moment, the, the the fame, the advancement, everything that you've been lacking can look good. Sometimes you even make these decisions because you're trying to benefit others. You say, well, uh, if I do this, I can give my children the life that they never had. I can give them what they deserve. I can, I can give my wife everything that she's been asked for. She's such an amazing woman. Or I can give my husband, my man, I can... I can do all these nice things for him. He deserves this. He works so hard for us. Or, or I can help my community. I can help my people. I can do this if I just make this one deal with the devil. But it's never just one deal. Mm. They don't tell you that in the fine print. But when you sign up, you go for the ride, baby. And you're making and it with the devil. ride your ass hard and put you away soaking wet. Mm -hmm. And, and you still make it. There's not many left. And we... And, uh, we ran some of the slides earlier. There's some people who went ahead and made that same deal as some others, and some of them, based on the value, they got a better run out of it than others. Right. But some people did it, and they barely left the starting block. They didn't even get to start the race. Insane. Mm -hmm. If you get televised. So bitter now. Yeah. 50 minutes of fame? Eh, not even 20 seconds, to be honest. Hmm. So understand these these Faustian bargains and deals, you know, they come with very garbage retirement packages. Real talk. You're better off getting it out the mud on your own too. And if you don't get as far as you could have you made the deal, if nothing else, you can at least go to your grave knowing that you did the best you could. You took no shortcuts. And whatever you got, you did it your way. Mm -hmm. That's something to be proud of. That's something. 
I personally, this is me. I'm not speaking for anybody else. Me personally, I have more respect for the person that spent the last 30, 40 years of their life working as a janitor for minimal pay, but could sleep comfortably knowing they did the best they could. They were able to provide for their family and do what they could without a whole bunch of fanfare, but they did it the right way as opposed to the person that took that shortcut. Made out like a bandit. Hey. And now they hate every single penny they got off of it. Yeah. And wow. that's biblical. It says in the Bible where they talk about how Judas betrayed Jesus and they sold him out for 30 pieces of silver. It talks about how when he got the silver, they first off, they treated him like a dog. They treated him like he was scum because they didn't respect that he betrayed his own brother. But they passed the silver. When he got the silver, he hated it. He didn't even want it. He got exactly the asking price he sought, and he ended up hating the money, ended up hanging himself, didn't even get to spend a single piece of it. All that for nothing. And it's no different. So as we go into this new year and beyond, really reevaluate yourself. Evaluate your principles, your morals. What are your standards? I would encourage you to work hard to elevate them and to make yourself someone worthy of having those high standards. But I'm also encouraging you to not back down off them for nobody once you get there. Mm. Don't let anybody make you bend over and take the <laughs> devil's deal. <laughs> You'll catch y'all next time, same place, same hour. Uh, we switched up for you a little bit this time around. Uh, some of us weren't going to be able to make it for Sunday, so we had to accommodate you all. But Sunday after next, we're back to business as usual. We ain't going nowhere. Manversations 2020. Like, subscribe, share. Tell somebody to tell somebody. Real talk. Exactly. Here, we ain't going nowhere, baby. We the new and normal. Shout out, shout out to Brother Ricky in the chat saying we could have sent him an invite. You owe it. We oh, always send out invites, oh, man. We, man. We always send our invites. Wait, he can he can join, join us next Happy week. Year, bro. Don't do that. Join us next week. That, we Major be on his cruise. Uh, so join us next week and chop it up with us next week. Um, I do want to say standing on your square, you know, on the square, the meaning of it, you know, uh, is an expression that means to be honest, truthful, and fair in one's dealings or behavior. It is often used to describe someone who is straightforward and trustworthy in their actions. All right. So make sure that when you're standing on your square, the reason why we tell you to stand strong on your square is because life is a life is a chessboard. And on a chessboard, you have squares. And your strongest pieces on that square is going to help you navigate onto getting a victory, which would be a victory in life. So make sure that you are standing so strong on your square that your opposition don't even have a chance to stand on that same board with you. All right? So take that with y'all. Make sure y'all definitely tune in next week with us. And also, remember, Manversations, man, we got our coupon code. Don't forget to go to www.sippingscentcandlebar.com, put in that coupon code. You guys got tax season coming up. Ladies, fellas, go out there and go get what you need to get off that site, man. Rack up. Don't cheat yourself. Great treat brand. Yourself. Yes. Don't cheat yourself. Treat yourself because it's great brands that is definitely going to uh, be beneficial health-wise to you as well. So you get two for one. You smell good, and it also is great for you. All right? So yeah. that's this week's show for you guys. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. James, Ricky, everybody that tuned in tonight. Uh, yes. Definitely appreciate y'all. I know it's been a short week, and I know y'all was like, yeah, y'all boys coming at us again. But we appreciate y'all, man. We love the support. Um, so see you guys next week. We up out of here, all right? Yay. Be safe. Peace. God bless. Oi. On the album, we do things like uh, songs that are a little, what we call, sexy.
And you can see from the title, it's more of a love album.